because of the political choice to reduce the CO2 emissions of the Netherlands, so-called green technologies are currently widely used. Biomass in this respect has been discarded, because people have come to realize that this is not really green. But what about the main other intended energy sources, wind and solar energy? I want to be brief about solar energy. The amount of space it takes is such that it can never be used on a large scale. Also, with solar panels, the ground is completely filled so you can't do anything else with it. Even trees or wind turbines shouldn't be around because of the shade. And the fact that the sun only shines during the day is already problematic. But at our latitude, solar energy in the three winter months actually delivers close to nothing. If you depend on it on a large scale, you would have to be able to store power for months. Totally unfeasible. Currently, we have over 2,300 windmills in our country and at sea. But how much does it take to really replace all the energy we currently use with CO2 poor generation? We take the current energy consumption in the Netherlands in 2019 of 2,440 petajoule, because we assume that this will not decrease rapidly in the future. The share of electrical energy was 379 petajoule. Converted to the better known kilowatt hours, this is rounded off to 106 billion kilowatt hours. Suppose we erect wind turbines of 5 megawatts each. How much do we need to meet our electricity needs? Well, 5 megawatts, 5,000 kilowatts of power, theoretically provides 5,000 times 24 hours times 365 days equals 44 million kilowatt hours on an annual basis. If we divide this by the amount of energy we need, that makes 2,420 wind turbines. When placing wind turbines, there should be some distance between them. Otherwise, the next turbine will be in the wind shadow of the first one. In practice, one takes five to six times the height. Turbines with this power are over 200 meters tall, so the distance between them should be about one kilometer. In order to place these 2,420 wind turbines, a square surface area of about 50 by 50 kilometers is needed. But for this calculation, we have used the maximum power for these turbines that are supplied from wind force five and higher. Except when the wind is too strong from such a wind force eight, they are turned off for safety reasons to prevent damage and overload. Most of the time of the year, there is less wind and correspondingly less power. In practice, wind turbines deliver about 25% of their nominal power during the year. The number of wind turbines must therefore be four times greater in order to produce sufficient power. This brings the required number up to 9,680. This requires an area of 100 by 100 kilometers. Unfortunately, we're not there yet, because now we have enough power on average, but not at all times. If the wind isn't blowing hard enough, we're still out of power. For this, it is necessary to temporarily store power. Because the quantities involved are enormous, batteries are not the solution for the time being. According to green thinkers, hydrogen is the ideal medium for this. What you don't get to hear is that in the conversion process of electricity to hydrogen and back, most of it is lost in that conversion. Count for the loss of more than two-thirds of this energy in the chain of converting to hydrogen, compressing and storing it in tanks, and then converting it back into electricity. As a result, we need even more wind turbines to compensate for these losses. If we can use the generated power directly 25% of the time, we have to compensate for the remaining two-thirds loss. This leaves about 40%, so the required number of wind turbines rises to more than 24,000. Required surface area for this is just over 150 by 150 kilometers. So far, we have only looked at replacing the amount of electricity needed. However, a lot of other energy is used as well. Gas to heat houses, oil to make petrol, and diesel for transport, etc, etc. All these forms of energy together account for as much as 84% of our total energy consumption. If we want to generate all this CO2-less, we need more than six times as many wind turbines. This brings us to the astronomical number of 157,000, and that takes up an area of 400 by 400 kilometers. You can see that even in the Dutch part of the North Sea, there is no sufficient amount of space for this. Not to mention the space required by the many factories that have to convert electricity into hydrogen, the enormous storage field full of tanks, not to mention the astronomical cost of these 157,000 wind turbines. Roughly speaking, the 5 megawatt wind turbines we used in this calculation cost around 5 million euros, including land use and installation. All in all, this would require an investment of almost 800 billion euros, without the facilities to produce and store hydrogen, and the power plants to later turn it into electricity again, and still without the electricity grid, which would have to be greatly increased in order to bring all this electricity to the users. 
To illustrate, one junction at sea with the underground cable to bring the power ashore costs 7 billion euros, so there are still several hundreds of billions more to come. To add to the misery, the lifespan of wind turbines is 20 years at sea due to the stronger wind and salt, in more favorable conditions on land up to 30 years. So all the wind turbines we have now, which we will have in place by 2030, will have to be replaced by 2050. So all these costs will keep repeating themselves in a relatively short period of time. And I probably don't have to explain what this would mean for the nature in our country. Estimates vary, but it is clear that each windmill grinds up several dozen birds a year. So that's going to run into the millions each year. And in Germany, with only 30,000 windmills at present, it is estimated that more than 100,000 bats are killed each year. And on top of that, the environmental disaster that is taking place in countries like China and Congo during the extraction and refining of the necessary rare raw materials. This is well known in environmental circles and in politics, but of course these people prefer not to talk about it. So, they tried to sell you fairy tales in The Hague and Brussels. Apart from the fact that this so-called green solution is priceless, our country would have become completely uninhabitable. The entire country plus a large part of the North Sea would be full of wind turbines and solar panels. Six times as many high voltage power lines as we already have, large hydrogen production plants, huge fields of hydrogen tanks for weeks of energy storage, and still dozens of power plants to convert this hydrogen back into electricity. Unpayable and unfeasible. 